Hi, my name is John and today I'll be going through how the peel structure in writing tasks in paragraphs will actually help dramatically increase your marks in the selective exam. Let's get into it. With the incoming changes to the selective exam in 2021 and onwards, it becomes more tantamount to have a structure in order for you to base your writing on. So we know that in the writing tasks, they can actually ask you a whole host of things, whether it be an information report, a newsletter article, a narrative, persuasive writing, discussion, and the list goes on, which is why it's so crucial to know a good structure to lean towards and to act as a good foundation to be used across these writings so that it can actually be used as a really good base. That is why today I'll be going through what is Peel and how that can dramatically help you structure your paragraphs to make your arguments a lot more coherent and therefore get you a lot more marks in the long run. I remember I often found myself writing what was on top of my head without a clear guideline. I wouldn't really use my time for planning. If they gave me some time for planning, five or so minutes, I would actually use that time instead to actually just write more in the actual exam or in the actual writing task, which is why I've kind of found that approach did work until I went into year seven and eight. But beyond that, if I didn't follow a set structure, it really had diminished returns on it in effect. Uh, when I actually made it into Penrith High School, that approach became redundant quite quickly. I noticed that the people around me were a lot better and more sophisticated in writing, so I couldn't just wing it. Instead, I needed to have a good structure and I did a lot more research. I tried quite a few different approaches, such as Petzl, Oreo, but then I eventually I landed on Peel, which is a good structure because I felt like it was a good foundation for good high school writing and what you can expect there. So what I'm gonna teach you today will act as a good foundation for the future. And if you learn this now, it'll just save you a lot more time and heartache later down the line as well. Each part of Peel represents a different sentence. So for the P, E, E, and L, that's four unique different sentences and they're all designed to answer the question in the most best way. So it is crucial to actually follow this. So generally in your paragraphs, especially in primary school or in junior high school, year seven-ish, your paragraph should only be no more than four sentences each. Otherwise you're waffling on too much or you're gonna be using a lot of your time into writing sentences and you're not gonna end up finishing your actual writing structure or your exam, which is why just keep it four sentences, follow Peel and you should get a pretty good mark. So the first P of Peel stands for points. This is the main argument that directly answers the question and is usually um, the first thing that you're going to talk about when you've talked about it in the introduction as well. So if it's not relevant to the question, don't mention it. And it's just one sentence, like I said previously. So if the topic is, should smoking be banned? It could be something like, smoking should be banned because it adversely affects our health. Doesn't have to be too complicated, just keep it simple because you're going to elaborate it in the other portions of the peel structure. The next one is E for explain. This is typically you're explaining the significance and why your points that you mentioned in the previous sentence is important in the get-go. So if you mention that smoking is, you know, is, should be illegal because it impacts our health in a negative way, why is this important? So what if I lose half a lung or I develop a disease? What is the ramifications of this? Does it result in me not uh, meeting my family or not being able to live to a certain age. Why is it important and why should I even listen to you? That is why it's important to let the reader know about the significance of it and you'll get the marks accordingly. The next E stands for example or evidence and this is where you show tangible proof of your point and its significance. So if you mention that you can get a disease, name what type of disease. Usually this sentence starts off with, for instance, or for example, and you go into it. You can also include some statistics there if you do know it, but generally if it's a persuasive writing task in a perspective exam, for instance, it can be a bit of left field. You don't want to be making up statistics where it could sound real, but you don't actually know because you don't have access to Google or anything like that. So therefore, just try to 
be as specific as possible, but don't try to make up statistics. So if you can get a disease, maybe you can get lung cancer. That's a direct disease and a correlation to smoking. And it's a great example to actually include. So if you don't want lung cancer, don't smoke. Pretty clear cut. Or if you actually Google and you actually notice that nine in 10 smokers, they, if you start smoking, then it reduces your lifespan by 10 years. That's crazy as well, but that's just something I made up. If you have access to Google, great, but in selective exam, if you don't have access to that, just go to the former and just stick with uh, what type of disease that you might get. And the last one is L for link. This is where you actually link up the point to the actual question. It's a bit of a reminder to the marker that you are directly answering the question and everything that you're doing is related to the question because if it's not relevant to the question or you're not answering it directly, you're not going to get the top marks. You're not going to get into the upper end of those marks, which we really do need. So it's just a reminder. So you can actually wrap up in regards to your points, your example, as well as how that answers the question directly. It's a bit of a reword of the point, essentially. However, just making sure you don't use the same words but it can have the same meaning of it. Also, in the next paragraph, if you did want to include um, a start off uh, the points, make sure that it's not the same sentence structure as before. So in the first body paragraph, if you start off the point with smoking should be banned because of X, Y, Z, maybe you can start off with X, Y, Z, and then that is why smoking should be banned. Yeah, essentially, it's the same meaning. However, it's changing the sentence structure and it changes the dynamic of your persuasive writing and you'll likely get more marks accordingly as well. In conclusion, following the appeal structure will allow you to maximize the amount of marks for the upcoming selective exam, as well as provide a really good foundation for more sophisticated writing, especially in high school. You'll be expected to write at a more higher level anyway, so if you know how to do appeal at a very good level, and it's very comfortable with you, then it becomes a really good jumping block when you have to do difficult writing later on. Typically, Peel was used as opposed to other types of writing and is taught in Year 7 in multiple selective schools, such as Girawin, Bulk Appeals, and uh, Penrith High School, which my friends and I have attended, as well as my colleagues. But if you don't attend it, or if you do attend it, it's really important to know it prior to actually going into it, or if you're already attending those schools, it's a good reminder to actually know that earlier on rather than later on. Awesome. I think that's everything. If you want something to be explored at more detail, make sure to visit bingsacademy.com or leave a message down below and I'll get right to it. See you guys next time.